Today I'm having a coffee with Catherine Woods from the Maligan Institute and she is an immunology researcher. Welcome to Science on a Napkin, Catherine. Thank you, Hannah. Well, as you said, my area of research is immunology, which means anything to do with the immune system. Mm -hmm. My specific area is allergy, where the immune system can often be inappropriately activated mm -hmm. in ways that can be uncomfortable or even life-threatening. Okay. Common um, allergic diseases that most people have probably heard of include eczema, and mm -hmm. asthma, and even food allergy. Well, today I'm going to draw a graph which shows the development of the allergic march. And the allergic march is the process whereby um, babies usually early in life mm -hmm. get the first the development of the first allergy which is often a rash or eczema mm -hmm. um, and as they get older these ra this eczema develops into other allergies mm -hmm. with increasing severity. So if we draw a graph where on this side we have the severity of disease mm -hmm. and on this axis we have the age of onset of disease. And typically, the first allergies we see very young, less than one year, we'll see eczema developing. And this is a, typically a rash which you frequently will see on babies' mouths or on their, on their skin, in their um, joints, the folds of their elbows and knees. Then at about two years or around about, we'll see development of maybe food allergy. And this can be mild to severe, so some people, when they eat peanuts, go into complete anaphylactic shock and that's life-threatening. Some people will also just get a rash when they eat something that they shouldn't or that they're allergic to. And then, generally, most allergies develop first in childhood, but up to about 15 years. Next thing we might see is asthma, which can also be life-threatening. People cannot breathe, and if they don't get an appropriate intervention, again, it's life-threatening. So why does this happen? Why does somebody who has eczema early in life, they're much more likely to go on and develop a more severe um, allergic disease? And the answer is we really don't know exactly how the allergic march works. And that's where my research comes in. And what we're looking at is the immunology behind this because an allergy is really an inappropriate activation of the immune system. And what we want to know is how exactly it's occurring. Specifically talking about food allergy, I think most people's understanding would be that you would eat something like a strawberry or a peanut and you would, you would then have a reaction to that and that's directly due to eating that food. But what's beginning to be understood in the scientific research that's occurring at the moment is that actually you may have developed that allergy earlier in the eczema phase and that when your skin became broken and disrupted, that's when you became, um, if you like, susceptible to that particular allergen and that if you'd never had eczema in the first place, when the allergy developed through your skin, you wouldn't then go on to develop food allergy. So my research focuses on the, what's called the skin-gut axis, where we look at how the immune system is talking between the immune cells in the skin and those in the gut, and then this causes the progression from eczema to food allergy. So what I mean by this is, if we have a person, usually a baby, and they have eczema, so they've got a disruption to their skin here. And this is a rash and these immune cells are activated. They don't just stay in the skin, they'll also travel around the body and talk to immune cells in the gut. So later on in life, as the allergic march develops, when this baby eats something and the food travels down their gut, these immune cells are already primed in an inappropriate way to launch an allergic attack against the food and this person will have a food allergy reaction which can be very dangerous for them. Well this is really important to study because if we can find out that the allergic march is occurring because of a certain immune signal mm -hmm. or a certain immune cell type we can figure out ways to block that activation or that immune signal mm -hmm. and um, potentially prevent food allergies developing in the first place which would be really great for a lot of people. Mm -hmm.